of the day's high, but still uh, one of the top gainers, uh, one would uh, one would say. Uh, Amisha Vora, joint MD at Prabhudas Dilathar, now joins us. Amisha, uh, what do you make uh, of uh, the market move? Uh, earnings are not that great, global news is not that great, uh, and uh, uh, markets still keep uh, going up. Yeah, because uh, maybe this is the time when market was in that mood of a kind of pre-budget, make in India pre-budget rally and uh, a lot of expectations are set on it. Uh, but at the same time, we feel that closer to about 9,000, which is where it is, uh, the, the market would probably remain in this range for almost next two quarters in all probability, even if there is a rally post, look, looking at the budget, the, the way we have seen the earnings panning out will take little time. So post a reasonably okay budget, which, which cannot immediately kick start the economy but give a direction, uh, we of course would be having uh, interest rate reductions. But we still feel that most of that kind of a good news is at this levels of markets. So market can in all probabilities remain sideways or a little range bound for a couple of quarters before it takes up, you know, next move. Right. But, you know, expectation being high from the budget, markets at a high, how would you go into budget? How would you position yourself? Which sectors would you be overweight on? So manufacturing side is the sector that one would look at and of course domestic consumption because of the uh, expectation of both the interest rate reduction as well as uh, GST. So domestic consumption and of course the way commodities are down would also benefit domestic consumption. But since the make in India is the key theme where the big push is expected on uh, housing, infrastructure, and then the related, uh, you know, as we call it, the uh, house improvement companies uh, will be the sectors to look at. Right. Uh, but uh, don't you think that, uh, you know, uh, one should be cautious ahead of the budget as well? I mean, significantly cautious because uh, mostly it's coming in on a, a Saturday where markets would not be trading in and, uh, you know, Monday would just straight away be a gap up, gap down opening. So what probably uh, looking at the way uh, budget may pan out, these are some of the investment sectors, but we are not very confident of, you know, at closer to 9,000 doing much of a uh, trading on long side. Uh, we are definitely cautious at this level. Right. Uh, did you see the Tata Motor DVR news or the, rather the DVR news which has impacted Tata Motor and Jane Irrigation? that uh, they would be included in the indices going ahead or the review of the indices going ahead. How big a positive is that? That could be really big for Tata Motors DVR uh, as the, the gap uh, between the, the two, the DVR and the underlying stock is so huge, there is a good potential of it narrowing down if the news uh, gets effective soon. Right. Uh, so the discount which is currently there between uh, the DVR and uh, the ordinary stock, that is something which you expect uh, to decline uh, if it is included in one of uh, the major indices? Absolutely. Absolutely right. Right. Uh, how would uh, you play uh, the oil marketing companies uh, from here on? Uh, BPCL is currently the top gainers. We have some of the other names also doing uh, well today. Uh, oil being where it is, uh, the numbers coming uh, not that great. How would you want to position yourself for OMCs? So one thing is for sure that as far as OMCs are concerned, their quality of earnings have substantially changed on a medium to long term basis. For the last quarter and this quarter, of course, the stock losses and the relevant issues will keep hurting them. But on a slightly medium term basis, their entire, uh, you know, the the spectrum of earnings is undergoing a huge positive change. Two of the products are out and the rest of the two, the subsidy element is going to be lower. Subsidy will be more directed, in which case their cash flow position improves substantially. So I continue to remain reasonably optimistic on OMCs at this point of time.
Right. Any specific uh, picks in OMCs? I mean, out of the three, four names that we have? So not very specifically any, uh, you know, is an immediate kind of a buy, but we on a medium to long term basis do continue to like uh, BPCL. BPCL would be the pick, right. Uh, that is uh, one of the consensus top picks as far as uh, the oil space uh, is concerned. Uh, the next sector I want to focus on is the PSU banking space. They have seen a sell-off in the last one hour of trading session. Numbers were not that great. Any contra call in any PSU bank that uh, you would like? SBI numbers were relatively better off. Absolutely right. Uh, you know, once again, the PSU uh, banks, in terms of the results, disappointed so thoroughly that, uh, you know, one step forward, two step backward in terms of stock price continues to happen there. Uh, they will be a part of the broader economic recovery, no doubt about it, but still the performance is far from getting any relief. So for the time being, we'll continue to focus on the leader, which is SBI, but in a kind of a semi PSU uh, kind of a stock, we like Federal Bank a lot that has been doing, the management is doing reasonably very good job. Uh, and we think that the asset quality issues are also not as substantial. So gradually, I think Federal Bank should be doing very well. So Federal Bank and SPI would be among uh, the top picks. Uh, and uh, the private names, do you think they'll continue to deliver strong numbers? We just got a hint of sense uh, of uh, poor numbers coming in from ICICI Bank. Uh, you think the other private banks uh, will continue to report good numbers, including ICICI? So I think that, uh, you know, at current valuations, uh, I don't think that this quarter result is the only thing which matters because, and there has been pain in the ICICI result also in terms of asset quality, and probably it is going to continue in Q4 also. But there are some of the other triggers in terms of how over next 12 months the credit growth will pan out, has it really bottomed out? how, uh, you know, some of the subsidiary valuations will add a bit into it. Uh, as also, mm, you know, whether the asset quality issues are stabilizing. So I think that private banks, of course, will continue to do reasonably good on medium term basis. But in short term, I think they have also run up a bit. That's how our view on the market is also that it will be bit sideways for the time being before it takes the next leap and this being one of the critical sector uh, with their weightage would also probably reflect the same. Right, uh, you know, uh, earlier uh, you rather, recommended... Rather... Right ma'am, go ahead. So we were thinking that probably some of the, uh, you know, stocks like Larson or uh, such stocks uh, would be better place to perform in the medium term because both the underperformance in the last one year but apart from that no doubt that numbers also have been a bit sober but in terms of the order outlook in terms of uh, the sector in which they are their outlook is improving also substantially and interest rate reduction also will be very positive for them so I think Larson could be a better bet as compared to some of the, uh, you know, top private sector bank names which have been doing very well till now in the portfolio mix. Uh, we spoke uh, to the management of uh, LNT ma'am uh, yesterday and uh, they told us that uh, guidance cut is in line with what uh, essentially is happening uh, to the economy and uh, they were not of the view that uh, a very fast pickup can happen. Uh, in light of that, don't you think the counter is expensive at 1650? So we think that uh, yes, as what we it is very evident uh, in the results and what else is are the macro indicators. Economy is taking its own time to revive. Rather, it slipped a bit further because one more important indicator is in the month like this which is, you know, February, uh, January, February, the so cement prices have softened, cement demand is extremely slow. Uh, so I'm sure there is, there is a lot of pain. But our other call is that they have a large uh, 
uh, BOT asset uh, company, the subsidiary, and even there, as the interest rates, keep, you know, horizon keeps softening, the NPV of that also keeps coming up. So the possibility of them raising money there increases. So there are certain other things also, apart from a broader improvement in outlook. We think that the Larson will probably be moving ahead more on order inflow and that to a larger order inflow rather than actual execution because there is always going to be a leg uh, in terms of how do uh, the orders reflect into numbers. Right. Uh, we just had uh, you know one deal coming in on the defense space uh, from Bharat Forge. Uh, we also have uh, some uh, news reports coming in that Hero Motor Corp may be looking into defense. Uh, uh, LNT has been quite bullish uh, on the defense and the opportunities over there. Uh, how would you play that theme, XLNT, uh, the defense and uh, the focus on defense? Uh, the defense theme, uh, Vanish, is very much on the defense side. Uh, uh, but I feel that there could be some of the other deals also would happen as what you were saying, Hero Motors or Mahindra also wanted. So there could be some, uh, you know, strategic alliances happening within India, outside India on this sector. But I think that, you know, Bharat Forge deal is an extremely positive step, not only from the company perspective, from, but from the overall perspective also that, you know, we keep saying what's happening on the ground though it will take little longer to have the capex and the employment impact but a JV with such a known company is also showing the kind of confidence that the companies globally have started reposing back in India. So I think that's a good beginning uh, and which is what the focus should have been of FDI investments in India and in that light I think this is a very positive step. Right. Uh, how would uh, you place yourself with uh, UPL Limited? That is something that you've recommended earlier. You used to like it. It has gone up. Uh, United Phosphorus, you still like that name? Absolutely. I think if you see the numbers, uh, quarter after quarter have been very good. Uh, the tight control on uh, working capital continues. Their promised uh, fact that they won't be aggressively bidding for any global assets or companies has also turned out true and I think they can, will continue to be on a growth path so we think that even from current level it will give a very decent 20-25% return uh, for sure in a year, year and a half time so it continues to be a very good uh, continues to be a good investment bet Right, uh, one more counter that uh, you know you told uh, was uh, Britannia it has become about uh, three times from where we had earlier spoken uh, you still believe the margin expansion story, the new management would continue uh, to drive re-rating? I would think that, you know, uh, so many times we have observed that uh, the stock, uh, howsoever good, continues to remain ignored at a particular market cap or a price. And when it uh, goes into a next horizon, the attention of larger funds start coming into it. So A, fundamentally we still think that the margin expansion and uh, you know, market penetration, value added product story will continue to unfold. We also feel that looking at the current market cap, the interest from newer funds uh, you know, uh, will continue to remain in the stock and we continue to keep liking this stock. Of course, the first big move is definitely behind us, but we think there is still uh, scope in the price in the stock and price both. Right, uh, Amisha, thank you so much uh, for joining us here this morning. Always a pleasure talking to you. Uh, Amisha Vora had earlier recommended UPL and Britannia and she continues to like that and the new space.